Five reasons. A reason why I should leave the church. I will only give you words of Jesus. Okay? Okay. Matthew 13, Jesus gave parables about the... And what Bible was this? Uh, your King James Bible. King James Bible. And you know when the King James Bible says it is the most accurate that we have. It's not the accurate, but it's close to. Does it not state that? It does say that. So, so let's go over this again. In history books, how many history books have you learned from? How many? You want to answer your No, no, no. I'm, no. How many history books have you learned from? I'm going to answer your original question. No, no, no. Listen, answer right, the question I, I've given you. If you want to have a dialogue, we got to stop the dialogue. Let me, if, if, if you want a monologue, I'll start preaching. Okay, look. Can you ask five reasons? Yes, Can I give you one? Give me five reasons. Fine. I'll tell you why. Five anyway, we can have a conversation. We sustain the topic, okay? First one is what Jesus taught in Matthew 13. Okay, what do you say? Okay, Jesus taught Matthew 13 that the kingdom of God was like a mustard seed planted, the smallest of all the seeds, and grow, 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 until it provides. It's like the kingdom of God, right? It endures to the very end, it perpetuates, and it becomes something that gives shade to nations. Secondly, Jesus said that the kingdom of God was like leaven. It, it goes through, it spreads, it endures, it, it goes through all things. Thirdly, Jesus said the planting and the endurance of the kingdom of God was like the wheat and the tares. You know about that, right? The wheat and the tares, weeds, wheat, they're planted by different planters. They're put in the soil together, right? And somebody says, Master, somebody planted weeds with your wheat, right? Do you want us to uproot the weeds? And what does the master say? He says, no, because if you uproot, if you uproot the weeds, the, 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 weed, the wheat will go with it, right? So, so the master says, no, keep them there and until the end of the harvest, right? Until the harvest at the end of the age. Okay? So Jesus says that the kingdom of God would start what? Small like a mustard seed, grow till it's large. It would start like, and grow like leavened bread, right? And then it would, be, it would coexist, coexist, right? Hear me out, coexist with the weeds till the end of the age, right? When there's final judgment, right? Kingdom starts, kingdom is planted, kingdom perpetuates, kingdom endures. Jesus goes on to say, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words won't pass away. And then lastly, Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock, I will build this church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So what am I, what's my first reason? Jesus himself taught that the kingdom would start, be planted, and it would grow and endure and perpetuate till the end of the age. So here's my challenge to you. What's your name? Ethan. Joseph Smith addressed those three parables I told you. Mustard seed, leaven, wheat and tares. Joseph Smith said that the mustard seed died, but the leaven didn't go all the way through, and then the wheat and the tares had to be replanted. Not lying for yourself. Can I give you another reason? Please. So you're saying this is from King James, correct? Right? King James says the first thing that is... It actually comes from the Greek. Oh, yes. I get that. But in the Bible, it states one thing, that it's not 100% word for word. That's not the boss. We'll go with the JST. Okay. Joseph Smith translation good? Fine. We'll go over that. Okay? So but, no changes in the JST back. No, no changes, okay? But at the same time, Joseph Smith said that even his words aren't fully comfortable. Who? Okay. okay. So that means, what's well, compared to a history book? In your history book, two sides of civil war. North or south? It doesn't matter. On the north side, they say the south. On the south, they say the north. It doesn't matter, right? So, different religions are the same religions. Different religions have different history. Bible and Mormon. Bible and the other section. Bible and this one. What we have is the Bible, the Book of Mormon, and everything else, right? And all those records are records. They may not be 100% because they're... You ever heard of the telephone game before? Telephone game? Please. They're not 100%, but there's more than that. There's a prophet of God. And what you're doing right now is dethroning God. It's deconium. Why would we need a Bible that tells us what to do every single time, every single time, every single reason? So we have the Ten Commandments, right? So we sin. We look at the Ten Commandments, we go, what's next? Repentance. Repent, right? What's next? Nothing. So we repent it, right? Say it again. It's not there. No, what, nothing? Okay. It's not, right? It's washed away. So let's say um, there's warnings coming. The second coming. How are we going to see those warnings? How are we going to know that is the second coming? That is the warning. A prophet of God. A prophet of God can control, not controls, but tells us and warns us and gives us signs and revelation. And there's not just one prophet. He is called two counselors. And he is also called 12 apostles, which have always it's sustained themselves. 
Eh? We call them the 70. And then in your individual wards, house meetings, stakes, everything. Not a moment goes by where the prophet of God is in something. Can I ask you a question, Ethan? Yes. You're to be, uh, scheduled to be a missionary in six months? Okay, so at the, the Great Commission, you've heard of it, I know you've heard it with me. Just repeat it together here. Jesus said, all authority under heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, uh, make disciples of all the what? All the what? All the, all the nature, all the nations, right? All the uh, people groups, right? Jesus said, yeah, go right. into all the nations, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Agree? T teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you, right? So if you want to be a missionary, or even an apostle, or a leader, or just a Christian, right? If you want to make disciples. But I'm not Christian. I'm not Christian. Well, that's not the point. The point is, Jesus said to make disciples, right? And there's two things he said to do, right? baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Secondly, to teach them to observe everything I've commanded you, right? So Jesus spoke things. And if I want to be a disciple of Jesus, I've got to teach people what Jesus observed, what Jesus taught people to observe. So let me ask you, what did Jesus teach about family? If you don't know, that's fine. I'll, no, no, I'll no, tell no. you what I got. I'll yeah. tell you what. Not a, not a shame thing, I'm just, just yeah. conversation. What did Jesus so, teach about family? Jesus taught the family back then, and family taught now. Right? Two different things. The first thing is, if you don't know what a family is, then you got to rethink your life. The first thing is that the prophet has given us the family proclamation to the world, which states that the family is there to be a lifting spirit. It is there to be wholesome between man and wife only. And it must stay like that. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. What did, so, you, what did Jesus teach about family in the four Gospels? It's a primary source material. Um, let me ask you, what, what's that? Matthew, Mark, uh, I'm sorry. Not a trick question. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right? <laughs> what did Jesus teach about family in, the, in, for, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? They're wholesome. What did he say? That's all right. So I'll just say a few things Jesus said about, because I just want to follow Jesus. Jesus said, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. So what did Jesus teach about family? Jesus taught this. Jesus was in a house, and people came to talk to Jesus, and somebody said, Jesus, your mom's here, she's looking for you, and Jesus said, everybody who does the will of my Father in heaven is my mother, my brother, my child, my daughter, you get it, good question, right? What else did Jesus teach about family? He said, if anyone wants to be my disciple, he must hate his father, his mother, and his wife, and his child. What does he mean by that? Luke. In, in the Gospel of Luke. Elsewhere, we know what he, here's what he meant. It sounds kind of radical, right? Hate your mom and dad. Uh, nobody here believes you should have vitriol towards your parents. What did Jesus mean? Jesus goes on to say, if anyone would be my disciple, he must love me even more than his parents, right? What else did Jesus teach about family? And, and this goes to what you said partly, right? Matthew 19, Jesus is asked, can I divorce my wife for any cause? Ethan, let me ask you, somebody asked Jesus, can I divorce my wife for any cause? What's, what did Jesus say? Is that? He said, okay, so what you're asking. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. I know you're going somewhere with this, but I don't know how to why would your wife be like this. That's my mind. Okay. So you're on one reason. And that reason is you believe that the work has ended. And that there well, is nothing. Well, the answer to that, what I just asked, what I, what I just asked you, has, is part of the second reason. Okay, so just flat out tell me the second reason. I can't without reading the words of Jesus. Okay, I, then there's no point in arguing with you. There's no argument. I'll just share the Jesus story. Jesus' stories are worth sharing. All right? Here's what Jesus said. Have you not writ have you not heard it written, the two shall become one flesh? Adam and Eve, became, they were joined together. And Jesus said of a man who wished to divorce his wife, let what God has joined together, let no man separate. So in response to this, in response to this, the disciples say, if it's that radical, if you can't divorce your wife, then why should we even get married? If I'm going to get stuck in a marriage, the disciples ask Jesus, why should anyone get married? And what did Jesus say? Some people are eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom. You know what a eunuch is? Uh, can't have kids, right? Can't calculate. Jesus said, some are eunuchs by birth, some are eunuchs by choice, and some are eunuchs by, for the sake of the kingdom. Single, celibate, 
I'll say that again. Single celibate for the sake of the kingdom of God. So, if I want, if I want to fulfill God's highest purpose for me, is marriage necessarily a part of that? Jesus says to be a eunuch is preferable. Jesus says some eunuchs are eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom. And here, let's finish it out. No, listen, because then... Matthew 19. Okay, yeah, yeah. First, about first couple paragraphs. Then you have Book of Mormon. Then you have Doctrine's Covenant. Then you have the Prophet of who says, you need a family as a wholesome thing to enter the celestial kingdom of God. The top glory, you need a family that is sealed with you. Okay. So you're saying I don't need a family to go to heaven? No, no, absolutely not. Because that's what it sounds like. It sounds like I don't need a family. I don't need a Jesus, wife. Not a family. I don't need a kids. I don't need anything. I don't need to teach anyone anything. I can simply just die and be happy. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'll tell you what Jesus said. Because then you're going into the Book of Mormon where it says, "Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die." And others say that they eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we do not die in Paris. Then there are others like us. Who say, do not eat and drink being married. For tomorrow we may die, but we will die in the kingdom and we will be with him. Okay? So you're telling me if I eat, drink, and be married, I'll be wholesome and happy. What is I'm that saying what you're is saying? You don't need a wife oh, yeah. to have eternal life. This is what Jesus said about eternal life. I'll just tell you what Jesus said, all right? Every no no. Everyone has eternal life. Everyone has eternal life. But not everyone has eternal glory. Do you know the difference? Do you? Did Jesus explain? No, 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 no. Do you know what it means? Eternal life and eternal glory. Anyway, can you tell me the difference? Okay. Everyone here, right? You made a plan before this that was written in the Book of Mormon. Where you just stated that you would come down to earth and be on a plan of salvation. And part of that plan was if you came down here and are not a son of perdition, you would have eternal life and life after death. That was your promise. Now eternal glory is something else. That is glory in the three kingdoms of God, which is also written in the book, which is also given in the Bible, I let you not, and Moses, and is also given in d and and Joseph Smith history, and in the prophet today. So I'm gonna ask you, what is the difference between eternal glory and everlasting life, which I already have because I'm already here and you already have it. But I'm pretty sure you're never going to get eternal glory where you're standing. Can I tell you what, what Jesus said? Get down from your school. This is what Jesus said. Yeah. Someone needs a Jesus said, whoever hears my words and believes the one who sent me has eternal life. Yeah, Jesus said for... What does the John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is my challenge to you. What does the Gospel of John say? No, no, no. What does Jesus say? He goes right to the Say it again. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. Yeah, so he goes to these guys. Jesus said, he is the bread of life. He is the kind of bread that if you eat, you will never be hungry again. And Jesus said to the woman at the well, woman, I have water. And if you knew about this water, and you if you drank this water, you would never be thirsty again. So when Ethan asked me, would he be happy in Christ without a wife? Yes! 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 Because Jesus said, he is the bread of life. He is the water that gushes out of the heart. Eternal life, never to be thirsty again. So, ask yourself, according to Jesus, if you believe in him, and you don't have a wife, will you be thirsty in your heart? No! According to Jesus, if you don't have a spouse, but you have Jesus, will you be hungry in your heart? No! 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 Jesus is enough. If you have them, if you have everything without Jesus, you have nothing. If you have Jesus, and no Mormon temples, and no Mormon prophets, and no Mormon family, and no Book of Mormon. If you have Jesus, and none of that, do you have the bread of life? Yes! Do you have 
rivers of living water flowing out of you. Yes! When Jesus says he is the good shepherd, he says, my own know me and I know my own. 